This is Rusty Wallace, stock car racing champion, one of the new armored knights of NASCAR's open road. And this is NASCAR stock car racing, the most competitive, most exciting, and fastest growing form of motorsports in the world today. What drives a man who plays as hard as he works and works so hard at play? What fuels the whirlwind lifestyle of this contemporary sports hero? Right along with Rusty Wallace, racing 200 miles per hour closer together than most people park as this new breed of NASCAR hero puts pedal to the metal in his quest for racing excellence. The origins of stock car racing, pure stock cars, backyard engineers, and bare arm drivers. They formed the image and the appeal of the sport on dirt and asphalt ovals. These men were more than heroes. They were legends, like Tim Flock, Buck Baker, Fireball Roberts. And today's legends in the making, Dale Earnhardt, Bill Elliott, and Rusty Wallace, all dreamed of racing from a very young age. Well, I used to live in a little town called Rolla, Missouri, and there was a drugstore there and there was the only drugstore in town that carried all the stock car racing magazines and all the stuff about racing. I used to go in there and sit down and read those books and go, I'd love to go see one of those races. I never dreamed that I'd be a racer in the NASCAR circuit. But those young dreams of glory would eventually take Rusty to the National Driving Championship and the top of NASCAR stardom. Dreams that were fueled by summertime Saturday nights at the local tracks, watching his father race. His dad did it on the weekends as a hobby. Just a fun thing to do, he just enjoyed racing. And we've always taken the boys everywhere we went. They've been with us. And so it was just a natural thing. They just came with us and they just started doing whatever they could do and get away with. I remember week after week, day after day, watching those race cars running. I just had it in my mind that, hey, those were my heroes that I looked up to, and I never thought about that I ever would ever get that high. And I remember listening on the radio how Benny Parsons won his race uh, after cutting a roll cage out of somebody else's car, and that was, that was a long time ago, but uh, that was the early days. In the early days of stock car racing, the venues were grimy, dusty short tracks, and the drivers rough-hewn men from the backwoods of the South. My, how racing's changed. Hello, everybody. I'm Mike Joy. Today's super speedways are filled with a new kind of stock car hero. Confident, aggressive, self-assured, good with the sponsors and the race fans. But when it comes time to put his foot down, he does and hard. And standing right at the forefront of this new breed of driver is Rusty Wallace. In just eight full years on the NASCAR circuit, Rusty's won nearly two dozen races. Only four drivers racing today have more career wins. He's won $7 million in prize money and worked hard for it on and off the track. The new breed of driver today. He can't be just a driver, can he? He's got to be a driver, he's got to be a chassis man, he's got to be a product spokesman, he's got to be a businessman, he's got to be... How do, you, how do you find time to be so many things? Well, it's pretty simple. As long as you know what it takes to be a Winston Cup race driver and, and what your responsibilities are going to be, I know that I just can't go out there and drive a car and expect everybody else to do the public relation work and these autograph sessions and stuff like that. It all comes with it. So, uh, you know, as long as you know what's going on and, and you're looking forward to it and you enjoy it, uh, there's no problem. There are lots of responsibilities. Rusty may be the most visible member, but a successful team must have many top talents in different areas. The talent alone isn't enough. To compete and race to win in the high-pressure, heavily sponsored NASCAR of the 90s, this team operates with an annual budget of over a million dollars. With a fleet of $60,000 race cars, a supply of $20,000 engines in a 30,000 square foot shop. Their racing for a car owner as famous for success as his driver, Roger Penske. Well, we're racing Winston Cup for one reason. I love to race, number one. I've always wanted to be successful racing in Winston Cup and maybe the short time I was there, we didn't really get all the things done that I wanted. 
Penske cars won some NASCAR races in the 70s, but Roger left to concentrate fully on IndyCar racing, where his success as a car owner has been unmatched. However, he always kept an eye on stock car racing and one developing young talent in particular. In 1980, you got the break that every short track driver in the country dreamed of. Roger Penske called and said, drive my race car. It was a, uh, it was a great feeling, it really was. Don Miller, uh, my personal friend and my partner in our team right now, uh, worked for Penske back then. One night uh, when we were getting ready for our, our uh, annual Christmas party, we got sitting around uh, at, the t at the dinner table and Roger said, how's, uh, how's Rusty doing? And he said, hey look, uh, this kid's been tearing up short tracks all over the country. Let's give him a break and let's take that old car we had sitting in the back. Let's bring it out, let's finish it up. I met Rusty, he uh, was an outstanding young man, sounded like he was raring to go and we gave him a chance, he almost won his first race with us, so. That was Rusty's first Winston Cup race, his first 500 mile race, and the very first time he'd ever sat in a Winston Cup car. So oh, uh, he qualified eighth and uh, started the race, ran in the top five all day, and believe it or not, finished second. And I got to admit, I got out of that car and said, hey man, this is simple. I mean, I don't see any big <laughs> trouble about running NASCAR Winston Cup race, and I mean, hey, it seems to be all right to me. I said, hey buddy, we were lucky today. <laughs> and uh, it, it turned out to be a, a lot there was a lot more to it than, than he saw at the surface. One thing that hasn't changed since the sport's early days is the constant threat of calamity. That's the risk that rides with a driver when he's trying to aim 3,500 pounds of steel, sliding on the very edge of being out of control. August 1988. At Bristol, Tennessee, Rusty sustains one of the wildest crashes the sport has ever known. The very next day, he was back behind the wheel. Any second thoughts, Rusty? No, I, I told myself, I said, don't let this affect you at all. I want you to go right in that turn four and, 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 and mash the gas for 10 and never even happen because the day that I got to go to a racetrack and think about that corner every time, it's the day that I'll probably be timid. Timid race drivers just won't cut it in this sport. You might run, but you won't be a winner. And what it did, it made me much, much smarter. I used to just get in these cars, put my seatbelts on, mash the gas, and take off. And then after you flip one of those things four or five times, you start thinking about, hey, what can I do to improve the inside of this car, make it safer so I can take those crashes and, and, and walk away from it? The seatbelts in my car, the side braces in my car, the, the way the roll cages are in them, the way the roll, roll bar padding's padded, the full face helmet that I'm wearing right now, it's just all things to be able to uh, withstand some real wild crashes and still walk away and come back the next week and be able to race. Who is Rusty Wallace, the race driver? I asked the guys who see him up close every Sunday. He's at the top of my list uh, as far as somebody to run with, as far as somebody to race around on a track. He'll race you hard, but uh, he thinks down the road what's the best for the both of you. It's not just racing each other one-on-one. -on -one. If, uh, if, if he's got to drop back and fall in line so you both can get around another group of cars, you know, he's thinking about the end of the race. I, I enjoy racing with him a bunch. He's kind of guy that'll race you hard. I've had a lot of fun racing with Rusty, and, uh, you know, like I say, he's tough to beat. Uh, he's one of the guys that you don't want to be racing the last lap because he'll do what you got to do. He doesn't do anything crazy. Uh, he challenges you hard and races you hard. But, uh, you know, he's, he's a smart race car driver. Anytime that a, a driver is able to win the Winston Cup championship, you know he, he has a lot of race savvy. And You know, you know when you're racing Rusty, he's driving that thing for all it's worth. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun because there's times I get to outrun him. But uh, the first race I ever run, I got to see him in my mirror. First race he won with Penske, I got to watch him. You know, I got to be behind him. So, you know, we have a lot of respect for each other. Rusty's first win for Roger Penske avenged the wild flip at Bristol. Rusty showed his tremendous ability to bounce back. In fact, that bounce back ability got him tagged with a rather unique nickname. Rubberhead. They call him that in uh, St. Louis, or somebody did, and uh, it sort of, you know, stuck in my mind, and he is sort of bouncing. He springs around a lot, and... Uh... <laughs> the big problem with Rusty Wallace is not getting him started, it's getting him stopped. <laughs> so. Uh... You know, he's always, he always wanted to do things, you know, quicker than I thought was physically possible, but... He's funny and comical, 
uh, always laughing and having a good time and joking around. But you won't find any anyone ever that wants to win more than Rusty Wallace or anyone anywhere that's willing to make uh, more sacrifices than Rusty to, to get the job done. And uh, that's why he's where he is today. Pedal to the metal, the Rusty Wallace story. We'll return after this. Welcome back. There is one thing more dear to a driver like Rusty Wallace than a good running race car, and that's the love and strong support of his family. Now, Rusty's wife, Patty, knew what she was getting into. From the time I knew him, he raced, and his father raced, and I think maybe that's why we've gotten along as well as we have, because we've always done that. We've never known, you know, a different life. That's always been the way we've earned a living, and we really value our family life and, and raising our kids to be normal kids with normal values. And just coping on an everyday basis, there's lots of things that we, you know, you, you want to plan, but you can't. Because you know that more than likely, you know, Rusty's not going to be here or, or whatever. And, and you learn to cope with it. My kids have adjusted real well to it, and I think I have too. Well, you give up a lot, let me tell you that, because uh, I haven't seen them in a week and a half right now. But the competition's getting much, much tougher now, and so you got to go the extra step. And so it's hard on the home life because I haven't seen the, uh, the children and Patty as much as I like to because I've been on the road. You get so wrapped up in racing because it consumes every point of your life. And there are times when I feel like our whole family is, is living through Rusty's life, not in a negative sense, but, you know, that's just the way it seems sometimes because everything we do is built around racing or around Rusty's schedule. That schedule includes the prestigious International Race of Champions. Invitations go to only the sports best, stock car, sports car, and IndyCar driving. The cars are absolutely identical, making the competition especially fierce. The outcome is decided solely by driver skill and in-race strategy. IROC shows the world who is the best of the best. Not only did Rusty win three of the four races, here at Watkins Glen, he captured the series title. Patty and oldest son, Greg, share in the celebration. Rusty's off-track schedule is quite crowded, too, Thank you. signing thousands of autographs for admiring fans. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. There you go. That's the way to do it. <laughs> He's the one with a lot of trouble. So I got back doing plenty of interviews and talk shows. The first Winston Cup race was the Bush Clash in a long, long time, and he was just tickled to death that the car ran third. Good luck, Rusty. Thank you. Through it all, right. Rusty maintains his smile and sense of humor. So you put the powder on him and make us look like geeks, That's right? Good. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Get on me, babe, and turn up the lights now. Race fans, the media, even at his car dealership. Folks everywhere want to share in the excitement of his success. And they all try to figure out what makes Rusty run. The constant demands on his time would leave most people gasping for air. Rusty takes it all in stride. And he has his own personal, private escape from the merry-go-round. He loves to fly. That's been the only thing, as long as we've known each other, that he's really enjoyed is flying airplanes. And I think it's because it takes total concentration, just like driving the race car does. Um, you know, like golf or, or tennis or whatever, I don't think would have enough in it to keep him concentrated on what he's doing. Patty's right. When you're used to making your living at 200 miles per hour, it takes something pretty outstanding to make leisure time as much fun. Like the airplane, the distractions in Rusty's life have two things in common, horsepower and speed. Like pounding the waves in his offshore speedboat. Or managing the Grand National stock car he owns. Team manager and strategist is a new role for Rusty, and one he tackles like everything else, full speed ahead. His driver, youngest brother Kenny, benefits from the years of Rusty's experience and his point of view. But if you think racing Rusty's Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac is just weekend work, think again. What does a driver need to run strong in the Winston Cup? He needs a top car. He's got to be an experienced driver. And today you need to test, test, test. And you've got to be focused. Testing. 
a part of the sport the public doesn't see. It proves the adage that racing is 90% preparation and 10% perspiration. Well, testing's got its ups and downs, there's no doubt about that. Testing, it can be real aggravating, it can be uh, time consuming. Uh, there's been test sessions I went to before, we've unloaded with the, the way we come off the truck was the very fastest we were gonna be all day long. And out of two days running, you didn't learn anything. All you did was learn what did not work. Well, the good point about that is it saves a lot of time when you gotta go back for the real race because I'd be doing all those things during the normal practice sessions during the race. And so it guarantees you that when you go, you feel good about your car, you feel good about uh, your engine combinations and all that type of stuff. So I love testing. I mean, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of times I sit in a wall when it's 100 degrees and I'm going, boy, I'm tired of this. Let's get on home and get us over. This is the best this car's going to get. You still feel like we've got some pretty good bit of right front spring in the Communication car. between driver and crew chief is essential to extracting the most from the race car in testing. Rusty's car savvy is a big advantage here. I bottomed out a little bit. Okay. I feel like I need more left front. More left front. Next thing I want to do, I'm going to go out with the, rat, or the open gear. Yeah, I was going to change this. I just wanted to double yeah. check it. Race weekend. The data from testing and practice help the team determine how to dial in the car and squeeze maximum speed for one critical lap. Qualifying has become extremely important. Now, there's a lot of pressure on, on, on qualifying because it, uh, anymore, I used to say, oh, I don't really care about where I qualify. Heck, I mean, if I'm, my car's good enough, I'll drive right past it. But more... Uh, Nowadays, the competition is so tough that if I qualify poorly and the competition is all so close, it's that much harder to get to the front. Rusty's earned a dozen pole positions and broken some NASCAR records. When you qualify on day one, everybody breathes a little easier and walks a little taller. Race day. Any NASCAR track USA. 29 times each year, a total one and a half million race fans with caps, shirts, and souvenirs proclaim their allegiance. They fill the Speedway grandstands and infield the capacity, and Rusty's colors are everywhere. The Miller crew pushes the car to the line. As the engines are fired, as many as 160,000 spectators and a network television audience of up to 23 million people grow hungry for action. As the race begins, all focus is on the driver, the most visible and best rewarded member of the race team. Rusty's always trying to move ahead. He falls back a car length or two on one lap. He might make it up on the next one. But in the pits, every stop for service is critical. Rusty's crew must add 22 gallons of gas and change four tires in just 24 seconds. Each member must perform his role perfectly every time. There are no second chances. It's much, much easier to stay up front when you can start up front. You know, if I have bad pit stops, it's much, much harder to get back up to the front versus when I had a good pit stop. Or if I went in a corner and I drove in too hard and got it all loose and four cars drove underneath me, it will take me 50 laps to get those four cars back what I lost in a half a lap. So, I mean, staying up front and keeping up front, qualifying is, is really a key. Rusty's crew are all dedicated individual specialists. Jackman, tire carrier, tire changer, fueler. They perform not as individuals, but as a team, working under intense pressure and with precision timing. They keep Rusty up front. Racing to win encompasses many variables. Driver skill, preparation, strategy, sponsorship, teamwork. The very best you can do on any given day, Richard Petty says, is keep your car in a position to win. Then circumstances help decide the outcome. Lady Luck can help you dodge the unexpected. And clearly, this is his day, as all the right moves land rusty, in victory lane. The first generation of NASCAR heroes have all retired. The sport gets larger, the stakes are higher, and there are more races and richer championships to be won. In Rusty Wallace, there burns a fierce will to win. Stirred by youthful, boundless enthusiasm and impatience, 
Yeah. Rusty Wallace defines the new breed of NASCAR hero. Are you the most impatient guy in this sport? I want to be in Winston Cup. I want to be champion. I want to be in IROC. I want to, I want to, I want to. And, and you've done it. But well, you're, you, you're so, you've been so impatient your whole career. I have been impatient. I'm, I can't stand somebody telling me they can't do it. And then I, I don't like getting beat. If you get beat, I can't stand sitting around and not knowing why I'm getting beat. Uh, you know, at Charlotte, we're, we're, I got to outrun the Winston race. We came back and got a complete different car because I just couldn't stand getting beat. I wanted to bring the best thing I got. And we built what we thought was the best car, so we went back out another one. And, and if normal guys would probably say, well, we'll go back and hopefully be better. The hope doesn't work. I mean, you've got to go back with a surefire thing, you know, so. Uh, I don't like getting beat. I like being competitive. I like doing different things. And I like, uh, you know, when you've won a lot like I've had in the past, you can't take losing. People ask that all the time about what's it like to be married to Rusty Wallace, or, you know, they ask my children that, what's it like to have Rusty for a dad? And it's no different than being married to, you know, to anybody else. Just we've always done that, and I've always known racing, and let's take it in stride. We've had our ups and downs through his whole career, you know. When it get, when things got bad, we, we just hung in there together and kept, you know, he, he pulled me along as many times as I pulled him along, so, we're, you know, we're like family together. Who are we talking about now? Uh, yeah. Rubberhead. I tell you what, Rusty's a lot of fun to race against. He's, if, if you ever watch Rusty on the in-car camera, he gets his hand moving out like this on the caution, and he stretches out. Plus, he does this a lot. I don't know why. If you ever see him get in his car, he's always popping his wrist. <laughs> Maybe he's a little weird. I don't know. <laughs> I started in 71. Rusty started in 72. Same little track right there uh, south of St. Louis. He and I were both very young, intense competitors. Uh, it probably hurt worse then when one would beat the other than it does now. You know, we, I've been here for a long time now, and I remember when I first came on board, boy, this is as exciting as it could possibly be, but it's a lot more work and more business than it used to be when we were short track racing around the Midwest, but uh, it, it's all worth it. I love doing it. <laughs> 